Okay, today we're going to talk about databases, basically what they are and when you need one. Um, so most people are familiar with data. Uh, you know, here we have Word open, you can use OpenOffice, anything. When you're writing a document, a letter, a note, anything like that, typically it's called unstructured data. And what that means is, you know, if I were to start off this letter, uh, let's say I started off to, uh, to whom it may concern, um, and then I would have some text like this, and then I would sign, you know, my name. The next letter may be, dear, I don't know, John, whatever this is, and then we're going to have some different text. And so if there is a, uh, if there's a commonality here, it's that this is unstructured. Uh, every time it's going to be different, depending on what I'm doing. And without that structure, it's hard to, it's hard to store it. Now, in th these cases, we can store these in files, and everything's hunky-dory. Um, what happens is, when we're programming, we can also store our data in a file. And um, if we're not moving the application around, if it always stays on our desktop, we're good. Um, uh, if, we, if we're moving the application from device to, by, to device, let's say I move it from my Mac to my PC or something like that, uh, the data is going to get discombobulated. It, the program probably won't know where it is. Um, it may be in a different format. The structure, the the way they, the file structure on a Mac and PC are different. And so you can see that there there would be a problem there. Um, the second time we need to to uh, to start looking at a database would be um, if one or more people are accessing this file at the same time. You could see if we were in a big company and we're, I don't know, we're working on a proposal. If one or more people try to access this data at the, day, at the same time, you know, they may put some changes in here and then I put some down here and the software doesn't know whose who's changes to make. So most likely pieces of either or both will get saved and it's really not what we want. Um, so in that scenario, you know, we need to start looking at a database. Um, so again, this is unstructured data, right? And let's look at some structured data. So in this case, I've downloaded um, uh, some ticker information from a currency, and this is the dollar Japanese yen pair. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this when I say structured is that uh, I have the ticker information, and it's always going to be text. I have a date column and it's always going to be a date. I have a time field and it's always going to be time. I would never put text in the date field because it, it, it would lose its meaning. And I'm not going to put uh, time in the ticker information. So we keep all of this separate. And so quickly, since the computer can see these columns of, of information and the, the, the rows of data, it's very organized, it's very structured, and hence the term structured data. Um, now, when we have structured data, uh, this is right up the computer's alley. It's right up the, the database uh, alley as well. Um, and it likes that structure. If we were to add a new worksheet in here, let's say, you know, I just copied and pasted this ticker information, but let's say this was from a different year, uh, even though I have this column here, or it's from some different period. Um, in this case, I could build out the spreadsheet to have multiple tabs of whatever data uh, we were adding in here. Maybe it's Aussie dollar or, or something else. But the key here is that um, not only do we have structured data, but then I can start to relate that data together. So in this case, I can say, all right, what was the dollar yen? Uh, what did it open at on this date? And if this were, um, if this were the Aussie dollar, I could say, give me the open on that same date. And we could start to look for correlations and everything like this. Now, uh, this is called relational data. And a good example of this is when you call into a help center, if your cable or satellite dish w went out, um, when you give them your name, uh, they start relating all this other information that they know about you to the person in front of them. So you may give them your name, you know, they're going to have you verify your address and phone number because the the system related this and pulled it back in front of them. They may, they're most likely going to see in it, see every time you called, uh, they're going to know how long you've been a customer. All this other information is related back to them and all that is done 
with a database. So a couple keys here would be um, databases like structured information, stuff that we can put in columns and rows, and where we need to relate that information. Again, databases are very, very good at this, and this is opposed to unstructured data. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, we were talking about this, this before, is that in a scenario where more than one person needs to access the database, the database itself is going to manage uh, who, who can access the data. And so if this were our, um, if this were our program here, it can allow me to access this field right here while someone else is accessing this, uh, this row over here. And so this is very, very important because it prevents the data from being corrupt. So what will happen is if I'm, if I'm modifying this row, the database is going to know that and it's going to lock it. So other people can see the data, but they can't modify the data. And if they try to modify it, uh, the database will give an error and it will hold the lock until I finish uh, doing that and let's say I update the data. Then it will release it and then somebody else can have access to it. So this is something that, while well, you can store data on a file, uh, in, in theory you can maybe lock the file so nobody else can do it. Um, the database was meant to do this, and it can do it at a very granular level. And you know, if you if you're trying to book a fl flight somewhere, those flights are changing all the time, and that's a perfect scenario for database because everybody can see the flights, but if somebody's modifying the flight, it locks it down. You don't want two people changing price. Uh, the price on that one flight. So just wanted to quickly go over what a database is, uh, when you could need it, you know, there those couple scenarios, and what type of data it stores. It typically stores structured information. Now we have other videos on how to install the database, how to build out the database, and this is important because we're going to use it in our, our, our programs, whether it be web-based or, uh, you know, something on the desktop. So uh, if you need more detail, look up those other ones. Um, if you are going across the programming videos and you see us using the database and you don't understand something, you could probably go back to one of these other videos and, uh, and get caught up or, or flush out how to use them. So we'll see you in the next video.